I'm going to share with you a detailed breakdown of the seven different aspects of how men fall in love. Number one, we have physical attraction. Okay, let's say, for example, you are at a party and a guy comes up to you and he's like, I saw you from across the room and I really just felt like I wanted to get to know you. I asked my friends about you. None of them knew who you were. None of them have met you before or seen you out before. And I just was so curious what your name is, where you're from. Are you from out of town? What you're like? So I came over here and just thought I would say hello. We have to be for real. I know that we all want to live in our Disney princess movie and feel like, oh, well, he just came up to me and spoke to me because he realized how amazing I was. And that's why he's here. That's why he wants to talk to me. That's why he wants to get to know me. But if we're all being real with ourselves, we understand that physical attraction is the reason these men are even open to getting to know you in the first place, are not willing to fall in love with women who they're not physically attracted to. What I mean by willing, I just simply mean if for in the story, like I just told you guys in the example, a guy is not coming up to you at a party to get to know you better. If he doesn't first find you physically attractive, let's just be so for real. It's because you have a huge dump truck. It's because you have voluptuous yiddies. It's because you look amazing. And that's what's intriguing him to want to get to know you better. They're open to getting to know you. They're open to falling in love with you. First, because they are physically attracted to you. Okay, we have to get that down. I know I know that that's not what you wanted to hear. You wanted me to tell you some fantastical, magical story, but guys are how guys have always been. They're visual creatures. And so, yes, his physical attraction is going to play a role in his desire to even get to know you, which will be the whole reason or why he even ends up falling in love with you in the first place. He's not going to be open to that if he's not first physically attracted to you. And so you're probably wondering, okay, how can I utilize this information to my advantage? Well, if you understand that all guys, majority of guys, I don't care what he says, to you, I don't care how evolved he says he is, okay, that guys are basing their desire to even get to know a woman based on their first physical attraction to them. Now, you can then say to yourself, okay, how do I get the most advantage I possibly can in this world? That way I can have my pick of whichever man I want. And if I'm the most physically attractive to those men, those men will be more likely to be open to getting to know me and figure out what an amazing, awesome person I am. You put yourself at a disadvantage of men falling in love with you if you don't take care of that first step. Let's just be for real. Let's be so for real. There's obviously things to your appearance that you can't change. You can't change your nose shape. You can't change the how wide your eyes are. You can't change stuff like that. But there are things you can control, like your hygiene, how well you dress, things like that, that can be changed and can drastically change your physical attractiveness. I'm not saying that to be shallow. I just would, it would be unfair. It would be dishonest of me as a man to come on here and talk to you about how men fall in love and not discuss physical attractiveness or phys physical attraction as if that doesn't play a major role in at least a man's initial desire to want to get to know you, which would even lead him to falling in love with you. I would be very dishonest as a man if I came on here and made it seem like these men are going to want to get to know you if they're not first physically attracted to you. Like that's just that that's ridiculous. You understand what I'm saying? Number two, all right, let's imagine two scenarios. You meet a guy in a museum. Okay. So you go to a museum, you want to check out some art. You're in your little creative little painter and stuff like that. So you go to an art museum, you check out some art. A guy sees you there. He comes up to you. He starts making jokes with you. He starts talking to you. He starts asking you where you're from, all this good stuff. And then eventually he asks you out to a dinner date at the museum. You're flattered. He's an attractive man. And so he says, you say to him, yeah, sure. I'll go out with you on a dinner date. He's like, are you free this Thursday? You're like, sure, I'm free this Thursday. And you guys go out on the dinner date. And what do you think you talk about? You probably talk about art. Nothing wrong with that. Now, let's look at another scenario in which a man meets you at the club. Okay. You're out at the club with your girlies and a guy 
who uh, is kind of sloppy, kind of gross. He comes up to you from behind you. He sees you're dancing with your friends. Maybe you got some nice moves, right? He comes up behind you, doesn't really say anything, doesn't introduce himself, and he just starts going, going ham on you, right? You're feeling it. You're in the vibe. You're whatever. You want to have fun, and so you back it up on him. You want to have a good time. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but what I want you to understand is both of those scenarios are going to lead those guys to categorize you in specific places. Now, I, I don't want to say this to hurt your feelings or to disappoint you or to make you feel bad. But if I don't say this, when I talk about how men fall in love, you will be disappointed because you'll be like, your advice made no sense. Your advice didn't help me do anything. Your advice sucks. Anytime you meet a man, you will be categorized by that man. You will either be a wifey type or you'll be, let's just call it not the wifey type. What I mean by that is there are girls with qualities that he will want to make his wife out of. And then there are girls with qualities that he does not want to make a wife out of. It's pretty much that simple. In the process of him meeting you and getting to know you, he will determine whether or not you, which category you fit in into i'm sure you guys are probably wondering well you know how, how do i know what category how do i know what the rules are how do i know how he'll think about this all of this is literally just a reflection of you so whatever it is you're doing that's what's going to help him determine what category to put you in and i'm just being honest with you i know that that might sound degrading to you i just have to be real with you right who your friends are is going to determine what category you get put in where you hang out is going to determine what category you get put in. How you carry yourself is going to determine that. How you talk, how you walk, how you dress. I know that sounds disappointing. Is going to determine what category he puts you in. And the reason I say that is because there is going to be a mental block. If you don't pass that, I don't even want to call it test because test is actually on here. If you don't pass that level of him determining, okay, you have the wifey type qualities, you are in the wifey category, he won't even be interested in falling in love with you. Because you have to understand, like falling in love is something that you, yes, it, it's a feeling and, and to a certain extent, you can't control it. But what I want you to also understand, especially as it relates to men, they won't even be interested in falling in love with certain types of women. What I mean by that is they, if they don't, if the physical attraction is not there, they're not even going to be interested in, in what it could possibly be like to fall in love with you. The same way, if they just categorize you as someone who's not worth wifing, they won't even be interested or allow themselves to fall in love with you. I'm just being, I'm being super honest with you. And for those of you who are like, wait, but sometimes hoes get wifed and sometimes this and get that. I didn't say that men always know how to determine the difference between the two. That's, that's not, that's not a, sometimes men don't know how to determine the difference between the two. And sometimes men take other aspects, weigh them more heavily, depending on who they are, and then allow those aspects to override the next thing. So what I mean by that is for those of you who are like, wait, but I see you hoes getting wiped all the time and this and that. Well, physical attraction, which is why I put it number one for them has overridden their ability to then say, okay, which category are you in and be honest about that? Or they just don't see it, but it still exists. And it's still part of the process of how men are falling in love. And I like, I really mean that. I, that's why I wanted to break it down for you guys on a more emotional level so that you can actually absorb it way better than me just giving you a bunch of science because what science mean to you? What what does dopamine and all these chemicals mean to you? you it doesn't make sense, okay? I want to break it down in a way that can be more understandable to all of us because we all understand emotions. Not everyone understands science, okay? Those are the women they're even going to be open to falling in love with. Notice I said open, right? Because falling in love is also a process for, for men. And a lot of times it's a little bit more of an analytical process than it is an emotional process. There are things that are outside of our control in terms of like, you know, the type of girls that we'll like and things like that. But for the most part, they're checking off these boxes. And in the process of them checking off these boxes, we're falling deeper and deeper in love with them. And we're allowing ourselves 
to fall deeper and deeper in love with them and it becomes uncontrollable okay so as it relates to categorization i want you guys to understand that it's very important because i know you don't just want to know how men fall in love you want to know how men fall in love and how you can use that to your advantage to get what you want or to get a guy to fall in love with you so as it relates to categorization i want to be very clear with you as much as it might suck to hear if your friends are not a representation of who you think you are or who you want to be you're in misalignment if your environment doesn't accurately represent who you want to be then you're in misalignment and when i say misalignment i mean if you want to present yourself i'm assuming you guys are here because you want to present yourself as the wife i'm assuming that's why you're here i don't know why you'd be here if you want to present yourself as the hoe okay but assuming you want to present yourself as the wife it's not just about wanting that in your mind and not actually embody that it's not just about saying it and not doing anything about it if your actions and your environment is not in alignment with what you're trying to represent what you're trying to uh, present to people or specifically the men then don't wonder why these men find it hard to fall in love with you or why you can't get a guy to be deeply invested in you we'll even put it like that a lot of guys can actually turn their emotions off for certain types of women once they present themselves in a particular way you understand what i'm saying and the best way for me to explain that concept is by explaining to you the idea of like let's say as a guy and this has happened to me like this is devastating as a guy this is why i want you to understand like this is what the real the, what the adult men are going through this is devastating as a guy to like let's say you're talking to a girl let's say you hang out with her a couple times you really like her vibe you really like how um you guys laugh and, and and giggle together you have fun you guys just get along real well you feel like that's that could be your best friend and so you're getting along with this girl real well and you haven't really told any one of your friends about the girl that you're hanging out with or spending time with. So you go and you're hanging out with your guy friends. Let's say you guys are watching the game or whatever. And then he goes to you and he tells you, hey, guys, yo, look at this. Yo, this this girl I'm talking to. Yo, she's mad cool. Yo, she's the she's the best. Yo, she's super dope. Da, 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 da. And he shows them your Instagram and then they go, oh, no, bro, what? And you're and and I'm 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 promise you I promise you I'm telling you right now, the the feeling that goes on in your stomach as a man, when when your boys go oh my god you're talking to her, it's it's something you can't really describe you can only feel as a man, and then they go on to say oh bro and I was with her the other you know, like last month or my or I know my boy who was talking to her she's crazy she be doing all this crazy she's a freak yo my, my next man had her this and that da, da, da. and I just say that to say as much feelings as he was feeling towards you before he heard all of that in an in an instant hearing that about you just like that will erase all his feelings for you not that he doesn't have those feelings anymore towards you or feel good about you anymore it's the simple fact that he doesn't want to allow himself to feel any ways towards you because he knows you're in a category that is not a wife not say that you've ever done that or whatever but i just want you to understand how these things go i also want you to understand how sometimes you might meet a guy maybe from your town or whatever you start dating him and all of a sudden you know snap of a finger you know and he's no longer into into you not all the time that's the reason but i just want you to understand some things that might be going on right these men are not even going to allow themselves to fall in love sometimes if you're not falling in line in a in this particular category of wifey I, I just i just i have to be honest with you like i said i can't talk to you about how men fall in love if i don't be honest with you about the categorization that goes on and i've talked to you guys about the mcdonald's and the five star maybe another live stream will go in depth more into that but it's so important because it's so relevant to how these men are falling in love it's not really just about i like you so much right like you also have to fit certain criteria for them to even allow themselves to 
fall in love with you the same way the physical attraction is almost like a checkbox that has to be checked before he'll even be interested in getting to know you to eventually fall in love with you you have to be aware I'm, I'm not here to tell you how you should live your life i'm not here to tell you what to do with your life i'm not here to tell you where to go how to act how to talk how to speak how to dress do whatever your heart desires truly i mean that however you must be aware that how you represent yourself is going to affect what category these men put you in, which subsequently is going to affect how willing these men are to even fall for you in the first place. So if you find yourself in a position, in a situation where men seem to not get too invested in you, if you find yourself constantly in a position where you don't think that your environment is an is a good representation of who you want to be, then you know you probably have some adjusting to do. Because if you start saying things like, oh, I go to the club with all my girlfriends, but I'm nothing like them. No, 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 no. I work out. I go to the gym. I take care of myself. I do all the stuff that they don't do. They're just club brats, but I'm nothing like them. But they're my best friends, though. I love them. Hmm. That, that's, uh, that's not how that works. OK, you can't spend all your time in the same environment as people and then talk about how you're not just like those people, even though you spend all your time in the same places as those people. And I'm not saying that to attack you. I just want you to understand how that misalignment can actually affect a man's willingness to want to get to know you or build a relationship with you or fall in love with you. Number three, we have test. Let's imagine you let a guy come over to your house after two dates. Okay. So you guys have went out for two dinner dates. It was fun. It was good. It was awesome. You guys had fun. You enjoyed yourself. Nothing inappropriate. He was respectful, open doors for you. Um, nothing uh, overly uh, se actual, right? Nothing weird. You, you allow him to come over to your place because you're like, okay, he's done a good job. He's, he's done everything that you want. But you make it clear to him that, hey, despite you coming over, despite you spending, you know, some time with me, we're not going to be doing anything uh, inappropriate here, right? We're going to treat it like we're out in public. And he's like, fine, you know, that's fine. I don't mind that. You know, we can, we can, I'll be respectful. You know, things don't have to go get hot and heavy. You know, we're only on our second date and all that good stuff. So he comes over and you guys are talking, chatting, watching Netflix, all that good stuff. And then he starts feeling up on you. And now you're confused because you thought you said that you weren't going to do anything inappropriate. But then when he's feeling on you, it just feels so good. And you haven't been touched in so long. And all these emotions and feelings start rushing through you. And so as he's touching you and feeling you, now he's kissing you. Now you're accepting kisses from him and you haven't been kissed in so long. And you're accepting as he's escalating. Guys love to escalate, right? He's escalating and he's taking your not saying anything as compliance. And one thing leads to another. And eventually you guys sleep together. Now, this is after... This is, let's say, the third date because you've had two dates prior. And on the two dates, you've been talking about how, you know, you're only here to build a real relationship. You're not here to do anything weird. You're not here to do anything inappropriate. You're not about to jump right into um, stuff that you guys aren't ready for. And even though he accepted that, he still came to your house and tested you. This is why number three is test to see if you were really about what you say you were about. Now, I know some of you are probably like, what does that have to do with how men fall in love? The same way I just told you about the categorization and the same way I told you about the physical attraction and how these things have to be in alignment in order for a man to even say to himself, okay, I'm actually willing to fall in love with this girl or I actually am falling for this girl. He's going to test you even if you present yourself as the wifey type. He's going to test you to make sure you are actually that. Now, sometimes he's going to test you to, to make sure you're actually that because he's really trying to see if he can build a real serious relationship with you. Sometimes, to be honest with you, it's just for his own ego. And when I say it's just for his own ego, there are men who enjoy the aspect of girls talking a big game about, I'm this wifey. I don't let no one hit it. Everyone has to wait three months. 
no one's gonna no I, I don't nobody's even done anything with me except for my boyfriends all this big and bad talk that girls love to do at the beginning there are some men who get a rush of excitement or just a rush in general from proving those women wrong to themselves and to him and when i say proving those women wrong i mean sleeping with them way before they ever said that they were willing to do with any other guy because then it makes them feel like you had these boundaries you had these things that you wanted to do i came along and my charm my wit my words my actions i'm so smooth that i still got from you what i wanted despite you wanting to stand up for yourself be this amazing stand-up woman that stands on business and you know is never going to give in to a man because they also understand and i'm talking about as men grow older they also understand that a lot of girls a lot of girls a lot of women are talking a big game and so when you're talking about your heart as a man and giving your heart to a woman a woman they're also understanding of some women will talk a big game but not actually be about a big game so you test that to really get a sense of if they are about what they say they are about i know you're probably like this doesn't even sound like love this doesn't even sound like anything i've ever experienced it's not supposed to you're a woman we are men the way we fall in love is going to be drastically different from the way you fall in love because for us it's not about the resources you have it's not about how much you can protect and provide for us it's really about respect and loyalty mostly for most men okay just going to be real with you it's really mostly about respect and loyalty so everything that's going to be related to how he falls in love with you is somehow going to fall in line with those two things because the respect and the loyalty helps him feel like a man and puts him in his masculine energy that he can then in turn for you protect and provide so everything about him falling in love with you is going to be somewhat directly or indirectly related to those two things respect and loyalty he wants to make sure and ensure that he has not been tricked or duped himself by convincing himself you're in the wifey category only to realize that you're not. And like I said, there are some guys with their wires crossed that they let that physical attraction to a woman take over their mind that they don't then look out for these other things or they ignore them and and go about the relationship without checking off these boxes rest assured even the men that do do that right only focus on the physical attraction and never try to check off these boxes or just ignore them their guy friends are the ones actively telling them hey look out for this hey are you paying attention to this hey what about this right because those other men their friends right who are not necessarily as invested in the girl are also understanding subconsciously even though even if they're too emotionally stunted to, to spell it all out and say it all out they also understand that the process of a man falling in love is not just hey you look good because guys also understand that that's lust guys also understand that that lust can take control of your mind and confuse you that uh whether or not you're actually in love with that person or whether you're in lust with that person Guys understand that, which is why we get together and we give each other advice and say, yo, bro, that's, she's not it. Yo, yo, yeah, you're tripping, bro. She looked good, but she's for everybody. Or that's not the type of girl you want to be in a relate. That's why we get together and advise each other that way. Because that process of checking off those boxes is actually what allows us to fall in love with a woman. If we don't do this the right way, and we only base our um, desire to fall in love with the girl based off of physical attraction. This isn't re that's not really love. That's what I'm trying to help you understand. The guys that have these wires crossed or do this the wrong way or don't do it like this are just basing their feelings or their love off of their lust for you. That's why the physical attraction thing is was number one. And it's so important because that's the only way he'll even be interested in wanting to get to know you and falling in love with you but also it can go work against the guy because it can work to his detriment because when he starts thinking of all the other things the categorization the test ensuring that you're the right person 
if the physical attraction is too prevalent on his mind that he can't think or see anything else, maybe you're the most beautiful, hottest, sexiest girl he's ever had in his life. And he can't think of anything else except the fact that you're the most beautiful girl he's ever met. And he doesn't check off any of those other boxes. He's really not falling in love with you. He's actually falling in lust with you. And even as time is going on, he's only falling deeper and deeper in lust with you. Okay. But that lust is not sustainable because the lust is only about how you look right now. So God forbid anything might change about your physical appearance, or there might be an even better looking girl that comes along that wants him. Now you're in a heap of trouble. That's why I say that's not love. For those of you who are confused, like, wait, but I, but the guys fall in love with, with hoes and the guys fall in love with girls who are not in line with any of the stuff that you're saying. That's not really love. I'm just going to be, I'm going to be real with you because if it's really just about that physical attraction and nothing else matters, then what happens when a hotter, more better looking, beautiful girl comes along? Number four, we have character. Let's say you're dating a guy, we'll say for 12 months. So a year you're dating this guy for in the process of that year. As time goes on, you guys are going to experience each other in multiple different scenarios. When I say doubt multiple different scenarios, I'm like, I just mean life happening. So you got family scenarios, uh, going out together, going out to eat, going out with friends, uh, you know, having get together, all this different stuff, fights, arguments, uh, long chats, heart to hearts, all that great stuff that you go through in the process of being on, in a relationship with someone. In that time period, he will build his understanding of your character. Now, character is so important because once you pass that more service level stuff like physical attraction and understanding she's not, she's a wife type. Now is when we really get into the crux of like the emotion behind falling in love for men. Because your character and truthfully and honestly, this character thing is the big thing. Okay. So I'm going to spend some, quite some time on this because this character thing, when we're talking about, listen, we're talking about love here. We're not talking about lust. When we're talking about love, this character thing is make or break because when these guys talk about, Oh, I knew I wanted to make you my wife. Oh, I know I wanted you to be the mother of my children. Oh, I, I, I want you to be my, 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 my baby's mother, all that good stuff. What they should actually be referring to as the reasoning for that is your character. If he's serious, if he's like really means it and he's a really genuine about it, it should be about your character 100% of the time because character is the thing that doesn't change no matter how much weight you gain. No matter whether you're 300 pounds, 200 pounds, whether you're pregnant with his baby and your feet are swollen or whether you still look like a supermodel with a super tight body and you're a size zero. OK, your character doesn't change. And so in the process of him falling in love with you, he's going to actually fall in love with your character, your intangibles, because that's what's going to keep him there with you specifically as time goes on. Because as time goes on, yeah, even if you were the hottest, most beautiful, wonderful girl at the beginning, eventually you'll be older, still beautiful, still hot, still amazing, but you'll be older and there will always be a younger, hotter, more beautiful woman out there. So there has to be something that he is attached to, and we'll get to attachment in a second, that he is attached to about you that can't be replicated or duplicated by someone else. This is why it gets really deep here. So we're going real philosophical. You know, I'm a super deep guy. We always go super deep with it. That is your fingerprint because people can't duplicate that. The, the quirks about you, the person that you are can't be duplicated by someone else that just comes along. Because remember, character is something that develops. You develop an understanding of over time. It's not something that you just, oh, I just meet you. And as soon as I met you, I understood exactly what your character was. And I fell in love with your character. Imagine if a guy came up to you at a, at a party, right? And he just saw your, uh, fat booty walking around your huge dump truck in your tight pants. And he went up to you and he was like, oh my God, girl, you've got such an amazing character. You'd be like, what, what is that a joke? Is that, a, is that a line that you came up with? what? I have the most amazing. Just say I have a fat ass. Just say that. 
don't talk about i have an amazing because that don't make no sense character is not something they can just see or sense right at the beginning which is why whenever you come across these guys that will have you believe or will try to convince you oh my god when i met you oh my god girl when i met you it was love at first sight me and you girl y'all i just seen you from across the room and i just knew like you gonna be you gonna have my babies girl like i just i knew you were such an amazing person and i knew i was just gonna love you for the rest of my life and i knew we was gonna build a family again really how, how how would you know that and so i say that be, because character is truly something that can only develop over time and you'll feel it developing over time because it will feel appropriate when i say appropriate it won't feel like he's describing character traits or personality traits about you that he's never even experienced even if they're true you'll be like you you've never even seen that from me you've never even under like you've never even we haven't even had a situation where you would have been able to experience that so what are you talking about i'm the most generous kind person you've ever met what have you experienced about me that was kind and generous you took me on two dinner dates and you paid for both of them and then i went on home and said thank you i'm the most kind and generous person you've ever met because you took me on two dinner dates you just be like it just makes no sense right and that's why i say character is something that gets built over time and your character are your internal traits that last a lifetime because when he commits to you he's committing himself to your character because that's not that's something that's not going to change no matter what showing consistency in character makes it easier for him to learn that he can trust you and put his guard down with you, okay? I don't want to make it seem like, oh, it's all about the men. It's all about what the men want, what the men think, and how they feel and things like that. But I do want you to understand, if you want a guy to get, you want to get a guy talking, you want a guy to start opening up to you, you want things like that to happen for you so you he can feel closer to you, fall deeper for you, He's going to have to see that consistency in your character that he feels he can trust you with his deepest, darkest secrets. OK, when I say consistency in character, I just mean like be the same person all the time. OK, even if that means you're an emotional person, just be that person. Don't be an inconsistent person where you're here one day, you're here the next day and he feels like he can't trust you with things. He feels like you're not on his side. Be a consistent person. Have a consistent character that he can wrap his arms around and get behind. I don't mean that in a dirty way. Get your mind out of the gutter. gutter. You understand what I mean? Number five, we have attachment let's say as time passes in your relationship and he begins getting more and more attached to you after a while he enjoys little things about you like your smell uh, the different quirks about you he enjoys the inside jokes that you have because as he is actually falling in love with you and this is actually how men fall in love that attachment towards you the person that you are grows the traits that you have the quirks that you have gross and he becomes attached to those things about you okay and that's why i say when i talk to you guys about uh even character and i talk to you guys about a great question to ask as it relates to character these are the things the reason i tell you guys to ask that is these are the details about you as an individual that men will only be paying attention to if they are in the process of falling in love with you if they're not becoming attached to who you are attached to your what your character is they're not actually falling in love with you they might be falling in lust with you they might be doing some other weird thing but they're not falling in love with you because the love is not about the physical right the love is not about your dump truck the dump truck opens the door to him wanting to be interested in getting to know you and then eventually falling in love with you but the dump truck is not why he falls in love with you truly and honestly but it is part of the process Right. And so as his attachment grows for you, so does his love for you, which is why as he experiences your character in all these different scenarios, all these different situations, all these different walks and areas of life, his attachment towards you and the person that you are continues to grow and grow and grow over over time, which is why you'll have guys talk to. I don't know. Have you guys ever been in a uh, relationship or a situation, whatever ship? with a man and he points out the things that you do that are so small and detailed that you're like how on earth did you even notice that about me like he'll tell you some weird stuff like he'll be like yeah uh when you get really upset you have like a 
a, a left eye twitch and your eye twitches exactly three times if you're like super upset or like if you're really happy you'll get like these weird tears like just build up right on the bottom of your eye just really intricate details that he'll describe to you about you that you'll be like i didn't even notice that about myself how did you notice that uh these men that are noticing all these super small minute details about you it's not for no reason which is why i also tell you guys if you want to determine if a guy's truly interested in you or he's just trying to play you these guys who are just trying to play you i promise you mwah, cross my heart hope to die to the heavens these guys who are trying to play you and just want access to your squirtle are not paying attention to intricate details of your personality or character they don't give a rat's ass i promise you I'm saying that as someone who's actually felt that way. The girls I don't care about, I do not pay attention to their character traits or personality traits. I don't care. I just want access to their squirtle. Everything else is irrelevant to me. I might play, you know, nice with them just for more access, but I'm not actually paying attention to the things. I'm trying to keep it as generic and painless as possible. If I'm in that mind state, I'm keeping it as easy going as possible. I'm not here to pay attention to all your little quirks and all your little personality traits. Hey, boring. And if you do ask me about that and I'm just trying to play you, but I want to trick you, I'll just say something generic and vague to, to, to make you feel good. But the guys who are really interested in you will really be able to tell you what it is about you that they love. And it'll seem like, why do you like that? That's weird. Number six, we have integration, okay? Now I know this one might be a little bit confusing for you guys. By integration, I just mean the integration of you into his life, building a routine around you being in his life. In the process of you guys being together for eight months now and talking for eight months, right? It's not just about, okay, uh, we'll hang out once a week when I'm free or I'll hit you up if I want to hang out or I want to go out on a date and maybe I don't talk to you for another two weeks. At the point where the relationship has been ongoing and is serious now for real, for real, you guys are going to start integrating each other into your um, individual lives. So what I mean by that, he's going to start saying, all right, what's your schedule for the next week or two weeks? All right, I'm going to send you my schedule for the next week, two weeks. We're going to organize all the days we're going to hang out for the next, you know, two weeks. We're going to make sure, okay, we got this free. Oh, I'm supposed to go to my mom's thing. You want to come with me to my mom's thing? I got this wedding to go to um, in two weeks. You're going to come with me to my mom's wedding? Oh, no, I got this going on and I got work. Okay, maybe I'll take that off and da, da, da. And I know you're probably like, how is this man? falling in love i'm telling you this is the process because as that attachment grows as that all that other good stuff grows the character and all that good stuff right he's going to begin integrating you into his life in a way where you're actually part of the regular routine you're not just a thing that he goes to to see sometimes every now and again for fun right you become an active part of everything he has going on on a regular basis right? You're integrated into his life. This is the process. Truly. I know it sounds weird. You guys are probably like, what? This is the process of a guy falling in love with you, right? And also, right? Also the desire to integrate you into his life. Because as he integrates you into his life, he builds an even deeper bond with you. Because you're not just a girl he sees uh, once a week. You're not just a girl he met on Hinge and now, you know, he's trying to see if you're cool enough for him to go on more dates with. You become a part of when he talks to his mom, he's talking about you. When he goes out with his family or goes on vacation with his family, he brings you, you know, like you're you're almost like this, just the step down from being like a wife or fiance, where it's like you're actually a part of everything he has going on. Now, this is where, OK, I want you guys to all pay attention to this part. OK, this is actually really important. Please pay attention. If you were half asleep before, pay attention now. You need to make a note mentally if you're building what you think is a relationship with a guy and in the process of you building what you think is a serious relationship he is actively trying to avoid integrating you into his life so for example he's making sure he doesn't introduce you to his parents he's making sure his brother and sister don't know about you he's making sure his cousins and nephews don't know about you he doesn't want to introduce you to uh his friends he definitely doesn't want to introduce you to his best friends 
He doesn't, you know what I mean? Like he just, everything he's doing, he doesn't want to bring you around his work uh, people. He doesn't want to bring you to any work parties. He's not trying to invite you to any weddings that he's going to or family functions that he's going to. You'll start to realize, right, after a while that when there's a concentrated effort to push against you becoming a part of his life, right, being actually integrated in his life past just him going to see you um, on dinner dates every now and again, right? You need to make a mental note of that because let's be so for real right now. If he is purposely trying to not integrate you into his life, it is simply because he is not interested in you. That integration is a huge part of the process of men falling in love with you. And so the opposite is true. If he's not integrating you into his life, then you know something is wrong. But at least now that I've told you that, you can be paying attention to that so that you can see if it's happening or see if it's not happening whatsoever. Because there's a difference between him integrating you into his life slowly and actively trying to not integrate you into his life whatsoever. And number seven, we have fantasy. Okay. Well, we're going to have a discussion about this fantasy. If I don't bring this part up as it relates to men falling in love with you, I would be doing you a disservice. I'd also be very dishonest with you because I know how I feel. I also know how a lot of men feel because I have a lot of men friends. I need to put this in a way that you can properly absorb it. Men also have fantasies the same way that you as a woman wouldn't want to date a man who is super rich, super successful, super powerful, got a drives a Lambo million dollars, buys you everything you want, takes you out to the super nice restaurants and all that good stuff. The same way you wouldn't want to date a guy like that. And then right after that downgrade to a bum who works at McDonald's is the same way for men. When we find a partner that can give us that satisfaction, and I'm not just talking about satisfaction as in finishing. I'm talking about the satisfaction of like doing whatever K-I-N-K-S's that we're into, doing whatever fantasies that we have. Each guys have different fantasies, right? Fulfilling those things. Once you have that in your life, you become attached to that. And it's very difficult to downgrade from that. The reason I bring this up, because I don't want you guys to think it's all about the physical and it's all about, oh, you know, satisfying down here. Because the fantasy isn't really about just the satisfaction of fulfilling this down here. It's also about the mental satisfaction of feeding that part of himself. I know this is not going to make sense. And I know you guys are like this. What is he talking about? This fantasy just doesn't make sense. How does that relate to how a man falls in love? But the fantasy is also part of the love a man and attachment a man will feel towards you. The fact that you are fulfilling those fantasies. The, the, the best way for me to explain it is I know you probably wonder, well, why do guys go from their quote unquote wifey and go cheat with a side chick or go cheat with a girl um, who's dusty or go cheat with, you know, a girl who's just not on that level. Here's the thing. Here's the block that happens. I'm giving you some deep man male lore right now. Here's the block that happens for a lot of guys. The woman that they see as a wife that they're attached to, they find it difficult to view her in the way that they would a girl who they would just use for pleasure. What I mean by that is because of their attachment to her emotionally and their respect for her, they don't want to disrespect her or do things that are frowned upon around her. They don't want to show that side of themselves that isn't as presentable. If you're getting my drift, I can't say everything because we're on, you know, we're on public platforms here. What I mean by that is the reason he would cheat with a girl who's a downgrade or a girl who's not as good looking or a girl who's whatever, whatever is because that subconscious pressure of being with the girl you respect so much and that you don't want to show your weirder sides to is easier to do when you're with a girl who you don't have any real emotional attachment to or, or that much respect for. And the fantasies can grow a man's attachment to you. I know it sounds 
Guys, I know it sounds stupid. I know it sounds weird. I know it doesn't make sense. The fantasies can also grow his attachment to you because he becomes attached to be being able to fulfill the, that side of himself with you. Okay. I know that it makes no sense. Okay. I, I just, I know it doesn't. A lot of times these guys are suppressing their fantasies with the girls that they actually like and are in love with and care about because they find it difficult to do the same things with the girls that they respect and they have an emotional love and affinity for than they would if they were just dealing with a random girl that they didn't care about. The problem is though, the guys are still attached to those fantasies because those fantasies don't just magically go away because you find yourself in a relationship or a marriage. So what happens is the longer those fantasies go unfulfilled, even though the emotional attachment is there, the attachment to that fantasy can sometimes eat away at men that puts them in a position where they're more weak and prone to making mistakes and giving in to temptation because they don't feel fulfilled in that fantasy. You, you, you have to understand there is there's a difference between se actual gratification and fantasy gratification. What I mean by fantasy gratification, I'm I'm just using fantasy as a placeholder for like K I N K S because we all have them and they're all unique to us and whoever we are. Okay. And like, we all have acknowledged men are physical, visual creatures. I'm not saying that a man can't be in love with you if he doesn't have this fantasy element to attach himself to, but I want you to understand that that's also a portion of the love a man Ha can have for you the fantasy fulfillment element and it's hard to allow yourself as a man and i'm I, this this is the reason i'm saying this is because in the process of me experiencing this for myself as a man feeling like that that completeness of being able to fulfill the fantasy element of a relationship with a woman that i i'm already in love with it's a very different feeling and it's a you become actually whole and way more satisfied in your relationship so you love the woman but you're also satisfied if that makes sense you're also actually fulfilled and it makes it a lot easier to not fall into temptation despite being in love with that woman because you are fulfilled in that sense my advice to you even if none of nothing of what i said makes sense my advice to you would be with every guy that you're meeting that you're dating that you're trying to build like and i seriously mean like you're the, the ones that you're really trying to build a real relationship with i would do the job doesn't mean you have to do stuff with him but you need to actually have conversations about like you need to have sex sexual heart to hearts Okay. I know that sounds weird. I'm not saying do anything with him. I'm not saying jump into bed with him, but you need to have those type of conversations, but they're heart to hearts in the sense that you should get a good understanding of what that man's fantasies are, what they consist of, what he's into, what he desires. And I'm not just talking about what, Oh, I like to, uh, you know, uh, choke girls, uh, things like that. Nothing basic like that. I'm talking about get deep in there. I listen to me. Listen to me. I'm a man. I'm telling you this as a man, all men have deep, dark fantasies that they don't go around openly discussing with everyone. You need to find what those fantasies are. He's not just going to give those fantasies to you for free. You're going to have to work for those things. If you do get those things out of him, though, you'll have a very, very happy man on your hands. You will have a much deeper understanding of who he is. You'll have a much closer access to his heart. He'll open up to you in ways that you never thought possible. And you'll get a side of him you never thought existed. All of that is amazing for you because that bond that he has for you becomes unbreakable. Can you imagine the man being attached to your character, having put you through all the tests, um, being attached to the person you are, loving your quirks, and then on top of all of that, 
fulfilling all of his deepest, darkest fantasies that he never even mentioned to any of his exes because he was too scared that they would judge him for it. Imagine the type of grip you have on that man's balls if you have that amount of power and understanding of him. You're literally unstoppable. 